Welcome to Scale Model Workshop. This episode originally started out as just a segment in a chapter of the Building the Ravel Monogram A26 construction series. But as I worked through the solution, I decided the ideas and techniques are so universal, it'd be better to just create a standalone video that only deals with this subject. So here's how I handled the issues involved in aligning the major components. No matter what the subject, precise alignment of the major structures and components are the keys to having a model that looks the part. And no matter what tool or instrument you use to measure with, the key to aligning those structures and components is a reliable reference plane. This principle has been used for centuries, and it's the common thread that links all methods of fabrication from scratch building to computer design. When we build models from scratch, we begin by laying out and constructing from basic reference lines or planes. Even with plastic kits using pre-molded shapes, we can still use these techniques to ensure proper alignment. But what happens when we get a kit with problems? For instance, like this 48 scale Ravel monogram A26 Invader. The fuselage of this kit has minimal integrity due to the amount of cutouts. There's a great amount of flex and twist to each individual half as well as when the two halves are brought together. No matter how carefully you get things together, you're left with a fair amount of filling. In a perfect world, both fuselage halves would be mirror images of each other, but alas, the pattern makers came up a bit short on this kit. There's a definite lack of parallelism from top to bottom when viewed from the front, and the wing supports are woefully out of kilter. Even though I've filled the underside and it appears acceptably flat, the lack of symmetry leaves the fuselage with a fair amount of side-to-side -side rock and a slight lean. In the end, there was very little I felt confident enough in to use as a reference. What I settled for was the cutouts of the canopy and glazing for the gunner. Assuming typical pattern making practice, I reckon that these were probably marked or cut in when the fuselage still had some square references like this. With a straight edge across both, I sighted from the front to confirm that they both appeared to be aligned. This gave me some confidence that my assumption was correct and that the fuselage wasn't twisted. Typically, I like to do my larger assembly on this square piece of milled aluminum plate. I generally avoid glass for critical assembly because plate glass can be uneven and thin glass can flex. The issue was how to affix the fuselage so that it could be held at the proper right angle on my construction plate. My solution was to add a flat adjustable surface to the fuselage. Construction of the jig starts with a block of wood. The piece should be wide enough to be stable but not so wide as to interfere with the measurements or any supports that I might want to use to prop up the wings or horizontal stabilizer. I marked the apparent centerline for the fuselage, and then used calipers to spot where I wanted the mounting holds. The next step is to lay out the mounting board. The mounting holds are located and center punched. Next I laid out and center punched for holes to be drilled in each corner of the board. The mounting holes are drilled and counterboard so that the screws sit flush with the bottom surface. The holes for the corner screws are drilled. I'm only using number six sheet metal screws, so I screwed them in and out a few times to establish some thread. The sharp point on the screws needs to be removed. Here's the finished jig with the corner screws in place. The holes in the fuselage are centered and then drilled. The fuselage is then mounted to the jig. To level the fuselage from side to side to my reference plane, I'm using a digital angle indicator. The indicator is turned on and zeroed to the plate. 
Next, the indicators move to the bar laid across the cockpit opening. Here you can see that it's only 0.3 degrees off. The screws on the corresponding side are adjusted to level the bar. The fuselage is now sitting with the canopy level. Now the vertical and horizontal stabilizers can be adjusted and cemented in an acceptable alignment. The wing mounts can be trimmed to allow the wings to be brought into alignment and proper dihedral. In the end, at least the major structures will be related to each other properly, while striking a balance with the fuselage and hopefully adding an air of credibility to the final shape. So no matter whether you're measuring with a ruler, height gauge, angle gauge, or a laser, you first need to establish a proper reference plane. And I hope this method gives you some ideas how to do that when faced with less than perfect circumstances. And as Nat Cole said, straighten up and stay right.